There are a number of people out there who have recovered from sociology activism. People who have recovered from being social justice warriors. People who would have thought certain things prior and then after they experienced reality a bit more, they realized, oh shit, you know, this, this just isn't how things work. I wish it was different, but, you know, that's just not how they work. Reality, you know, life is going to be what teach most of these people that, yeah, um, you're not lining up with reality. You, a lot of these people are going to hit bottom. And I don't think we, I, I, I don't think a method of helping these people is to ridicule them. If they just have to put up with ridicule uh, and, and insults, and insults being the, the primary thing, um, I mean, ridicule, there's appropriate ridicule, but, you know, just insults and just a, it, blatant attempts to make someone feel like bad, feel bad about themselves, that's not going to help. That's going to, that's going to just increase their depression when or if they eventually hit bottom in that way so they can build back up because I mean you kind of have to hit bottom at some point or you have to have something happen that gives you a major realization so I mean nothing no amount of bullying towards them no amount of just pure insults towards them is going to make them change their mind it, it doesn't help Life is going to be what teaches them the most. And when people hit bottom, we need to be there in support as much as we can. We need to show that we're decent people when people, you know, start getting out of this. It's not the time to laugh at how stupid they were. It's time to, to let them know, hey, you know, some of us, uh, many of us have been there. You know, we're here for you. And I, I, I think there needs to be more of that. Um, I mean, so much of this is about not really understanding how the world works, but you think you do because you've studied sociology. Oh, but there are these systems and there's this and there's this and there's this. Look at all these labels I, I've given you. Great. Um, and you can go into detail about those ways of breaking apart uh, what's in front of us. Okay, fine. There are these systems, but there's other systems you're not looking at that are just part of our reality. You can't moralize over... something that can't change. You can't change the fact that we're humans. You can't change human nature. You can't, you know, and, and no amount of demonizing it is going to make it go away. We're going to be what we are. But most of this stuff that we're seeing from people stems from this bullshit that gets taught from, to kids at a young age. They're being indoctrinated into this mindset. Some of the parents are doing it, a lot of the parents are doing it, and then other parts of it are the schools are doing it, the schools are condoning it. And it's frustrating. It's the whole, everyone's a winner, let's, uh, let's reset the scores when one team makes too many points, um, you know, everyone's great at everything. And uh, if you say otherwise, you're a terrible person. Um, I, I mean, our schools certainly don't focus much on trying to... coddle, I guess. There, I mean, there are some things that are good to coddle. To coddle when someone is exceptional at something. 
our school, school system fails kids there. Most kids are going to be really, really good at, at something. And those that are should have the opportunities to be able to thrive, to be able to do a lot more things uh, related to the things that they're good at. But, I mean, we just sort of want this cookie-cutter kind of uh, education, so that's just not really possible. So, you know, in order to make, try to make that possible, let's, let's, you know, pump kids full of, of pharmaceutical drugs like Ritalin so you can indoctrinate them with this mindset from a young age, this, this strange mindset that doesn't reflect reality at all. Everyone's a winner. Every, you know, all this stuff that these kids then grow up and still think is the truth sort of like, you know, it's it's like uh, a more extreme version of, uh, you know, oh, how about some teenagers that still believe in Santa Claus? You know, the same sort of shit. And now they want to take it to colleges and they're going extreme at it and they're clashing with reality and when they start trying to get into the workforce, and the workforces are going, um, no, that's not the way things are. Uh, you don't run my company. They're going to go, oh, shit. And they might tr try to <laughs> get media's attention or whatever, but it it's not going to work. You know, reality is going to kick some of these people in the butt. And it's sad that they even thought that that... It's It's tragic really, that so many people are in this mindset. And it's because of what we're doing starting at elementary school. We're doing before they get to elementary school. There was a, a Sesame Street song. Um, I think it was everybody, everyone makes mistakes. Oh, yes, they do. Uh, Big Bird, I think, was singing it. And I think someone else has sung it too. More than one character has sung it on that. And uh, that was, of course, the pre-80s variety of Sesame Street. And, uh, but, you know, that kind of message has stopped. You know, in the 70s, uh, one of the big, I mean, look at Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo, you know, all these things that are scary, if you just remove the facade, they're just, look, look what it is. That's the message. That's the general message. It's a good message. And those are the only things in my childhood that gave me any... that were that was really trying to show... you know, more about reality. But damn those churches. <sighs> oh, some of these churches teach some messed up stuff. Messed up stuff. For me, the churches, I think, are the, the, the religious part is what's, what's probably messed me up the most. There's a lot of stuff within that. I could talk probably for hours about the shit if I wanted to be whiny about it. But what are they doing out there? Anyway, um, but our, our public school system is fucked. It's totally fucked. Um, you know, with with this ideological thinking in which if you don't fall into it easily then you need to again you know go on pharmaceutical drugs like Ritalin um, you know just learn this ideology and when it starts when shit starts hitting the fan by the time you reach your late teens you know well you know uh Got the best education a politician can buy, right? Um, or sell, I should say. Standardized testing. All this ideological shit. All this shit the whole time. And if it was bad when, when I was young, it, it's got to be really bad now. And you can see that it's really bad now. 
we need to be able to show there needs to be some way for kids to know that they're being bullshitted I mean if we could get through to some of these parents but I don't think that's going to happen see the thing is with this whole everyone's a winner mindset it's so not true I mean it's like the end of the movie Tu Wang Fu it's so not true that's not how people act that's not how people respond to things the, to me the most damaging kind of, of media that we can show to kids is the stuff where people react to things in ways that they don't really do in real life. It's the reactions. The shit has to make sense. And if it's a certain message and it doesn't really make sense when you try to break it apart logically, but somehow on the show you're, oh sure, yeah. When you're watching it, that is that is indoctrination of shit that's damaging that's that's bullshit that's why again i i don't like disney i don't like disney at all disney does this the most the message is ridiculous the things that it teaches are not actually positive messages they're unrealistic they set people up to to build up your dreams and have them crashing down later oh but you temporarily felt good right that's all that matters right yeah we we do sometimes need to think of the children but not for the reasons that most people say that we need to think of the children most of the time, the people saying we need to think of the children, it's, oh no, they said a naughty word. Oh no, they saw a breast. They, they, they saw a penis. That's usually what, you know, the, uh, uh, uh we must protect the children, uh, uh crap is, is usually about. So, the best way to support the people who have been brainwashed into this crap. Okay, the best way we can support them is by showing them that many of us have been there. Many of us have been there. That many of us used to think uh, more on the lines of a, of a social justice warrior. That many of us used to be there. You know, it doesn't matter if it was 30 years ago when you used to, used to sort of be there. You still have to admit, hey, this is how I used to be. This is how I used to think of people. It certainly contributes to why I am on disability income. It certainly contributes to some of my social ineptness. Four years past four years, I have learned more about life than the previous 20. Easily. Most of it has to do with getting out of that, finally getting out of that uh, uh, very autistically patterned thing of uh, all these lists of thousands and thousands and thousands of things not to do and realizing wait no that's that's ridiculous all this all that uh, uh, you know that whole everyone's a winner thing uh, that is kind of at the heart of it religion certainly had played its role in it but when it comes to that part of it and those lists, you know, if you go with religion, at least God's lists aren't that huge. 
these this these things are lists that get bigger and bigger and bigger almost almost as if it castrates the mind you know fill it with so much shit that it has to constantly process so you can't just move on with your life and enjoy your life it's, it's terrible it's a terrible way to live it is living in fear fear 24 7 never really loosen up I still struggle with it a lot a lot I'm looking so forward to moving to a place where that isn't the focus. It's not expected of me. But I still struggle with this stuff today. I was raised to be an SJW. Without hesitation, I state that. Okay, I still struggle. There are ways that I wish things were like. It'd be nice if life was like the end of Tu Wang Fu. It would be nice if life was like what you find on uh, Disney programming uh, since the 1990s for children. It'd be nice if that's how life was like. But it's not. It would be nice if life were actually, you know, if, if it could be... If, if things really were like everyday feminism, uh, uh, you know, the website that and that's about to crash and burn, um, or it looks like it, maybe they'll get some grant from some media company so they can get larger. But, um, but we need to show people, but we need to show people that we will support them. We will give them all the support they could possibly ever need or want if they uh, if they if you know if they have the realization and are like wait a minute uh, life isn't quite looking like that no it isn't looking like that you've been duped so many people have been duped and The Ritalin thing kind of pisses me off a lot. They had me on Ritalin. That that shit was fucked up. Yeah, we're fucking up the kids. The young kids. The impressionable kids. And we're making them believe in values that don't make any sense. And then eventually they have to learn the hard way. We could try to do something to avoid this, but it would require that we start actually making it political. Start making it so we have to address these things going on in public schools. We have to show that, you know what, competition is, 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 an, is an important thing to learn about. Um, the fact that in any sort of game whether it's a political game, whether it's a for fun game, whatever, there are winners and losers, period. You know, and we need to realize that, yes, some people are better at th some things than other people. And some people are worse at some things than other people. Um, that's how it is. I think we should hold schools more responsible for what they teach in that regard. Is that shit real? Is is it part of the genuine curriculum? And if it is, what can we do to get rid of it? It's a belief system. One that's gained quite a bit of power. If we allow this belief system to... pretty much destroy the reasons why companies exist 
we're screwed. Now, I don't think it's going to get to that level, though I, we are seeing it get pretty extreme in Canada, but um, but that's only hearsay by people that I know that are there. I haven't been there to really know. But when we have someone like Trump in office, it just doesn't seem like that kind of, kind of shit's going to fly. And I guess that's one of the few good things about Trump being in office is that that ideology that we're indoctrinating with kids from early ages um, is less likely to flourish. And I guess we have to count our blessings there, right?